Hi, it's Tarrant. And Stella from Meeple University on the Dice Tower. Today we'll be teaching you how to play 60 Second City, game designed by Ken Gruel and Quentin Weir, and published by Buffalo Games. Hopefully after watching this video, you'll be ready to play the game. Let's get to the table. 60 Second City is a two-player real-time cooperative puzzle game in which you will work together to try to build up a city that meets a predetermined set of goals. Over five rounds, players will need to try to match patterns and avoid and resolve pollution in order to complete as many goals as possible. And if they can complete all of their pre-selected goal cards by the end of the fifth round, then they'll win the game. To set up the game, take the wooden grid board, all of the domino pieces which you will shuffle up into a face down pile, all of these single square pollution tiles which you'll stack into five stacks of three, and the two dice which are ultimately used for placing pollution. Then shuffle up and deal out the gold cards into a face down stack. You'll use 12 cards in a starter game, 16 in the standard game, 20 in a difficult game, or 24 in an expert game. You'll be aiming to complete all of these goals across the course of five rounds to win the game, and any goal cards which weren't dealt out should be returned to the box. You'll also find a deck of event cards which you use in the advanced game, and so I'll talk about these at the end of the video. Get yourself a one minute timer, and you're now ready to play. 60 Second City is played in five rounds, and each round is played in three phases. Setup, play, and scoring. First is setup, which has two steps. You'll deal out goal cards from the goal deck until you have a total of five face-up goals. If this is not the first round, then any goals which were left over and not completed in the previous round count towards this five. Then you'll add the next stack of three pollution tiles to the board. For each of the new tiles, roll the two pollution dice and then place the tile at the coordinates shown. So here blue four, red one. If you ever roll a combination which already has a pollution tile, then you get lucky. You don't place this tile and simply remove it from the game back to the box. Although you'll only add three new tiles to the board each round, there may be some left over from previous rounds as you get later in the game. So there may be more than three on the board when you start to play the round. Now it's time to play the round. In real time, the two players will have one minute to work together, drawing tiles randomly from the face down dominoes tiles and then adding them to their cities, trying to meet the objectives shown on these cards. I'll talk about the objectives in the scoring phase, but for now let's understand the rules of how to build the city. First, start the countdown timer. Now both players place tiles. Firstly, pick up a tile face down from the pile. You must now place this tile somewhere onto the board before you can go and take another. The first tile placed must share one full face with City Hall. Any subsequent tile which is placed must either share a face with City Hall or an already placed tile. This does not include pollution tiles, and so this would not be a valid placement, but this would. You cannot place a tile on top of an already placed tile, a pollution tile, or City Hall. And once you've placed a tile, you're not allowed to pick it up and move it again. Only once a player has placed the previous tile can that player pick up another and continue placing. Both players continue placing until time expires, and if a player has a tile in hand when time expires, they may place that as well. Now it's time to score your city against the goal cards in play this round. Your aim is to complete all of your goal cards, and when you do, you remove them from the game. Some goals also come with the additional benefit that they remove some pollution from the board, which means you'll have fewer pollution in subsequent rounds and more space for your city. There are five different types of goal cards in the game. A match the pattern goal requires you to have the pattern shown in any orientation somewhere in your city. So here, this line of four industrial buildings would match this pattern and score this goal. A match the pattern goal may have a remove pollution benefit shown by this black bar. 
In such a case, you'll score the goal for matching the colored pattern, but additionally, you can remove any pollution from the map in the location shown relative to the pattern. So for this one, this set of four power plants matches the pattern and allows this pollution in the middle to be scrubbed, removing that from the game as well as this goal. While in this case, the pattern is still matched by these four commercial buildings, so the goal is still scored, but because there are no pollution in the indicated spaces, there is no additional benefit of scrubbing pollution. A block zone goal is scored by making a contiguous area of that type of building up to the number shown. So here, for example, five parks in a block of any shape. Block zones must be orthogonally adjacent. So this is a set of four and this is a set of five, not enough to complete this residential block. The size on the block zone goal is the minimum size. And so this zone of eight still meets this goal of a block zone of five. The third type, which is related, is the 10 block zone. And a 10 block zone will give you two different types of building that can be part of that block. Here, for example, there is a 13 block zone of parks and farms, which allows this one to be scored. As an additional benefit for each 10 block zone, any pollution that is completely surrounded by that zone gets to be scrubbed from the board. So here you would remove these two pollution as well as scoring this goal. The fourth type of goal is a border goal, and this will require you to have four of a certain building type on the edge of your grid. So here, one, two, three, four, counts to score this goal. The final type of goal is a neighbor goal, which requires you to have a certain number of one building type adjacent to at least one of a second building type. Here, for example, it's four commercial neighboring any residential. You would count up the number of commercial buildings that were adjacent to at least one residential building, and if it was four or more, you would score this goal. So here, one, two, three, four, successful. You are counting the number of the first name building, not the second. So here, residential neighboring parks, you have only three residentials, which are neighboring at least one park, although there are four parks neighboring the residentials. In this case, because you're counting the residentials, this goal is not complete. If a neighbor goal requires a certain building type next to pollution, then if you complete that goal, you also get to remove any of the adjacent pollution. So here there are four industrial, which are adjacent to at least one pollution. And so these three adjacent pollution come off the board. Once you've finished scoring any goals that you achieved, you'll leave any leftover goals next to the board, and then remove all of the colored city tiles from the board, returning them face down to the supply of city tiles, and you'll shuffle them up for the next round. Any pollution that you did not successfully scrub by completing goals remains on the board for next round. You'll now proceed to the next round setup. The aim of the game is to successfully score all of your goal cards by the end of the fifth round. If you get to the start of the fifth round and there's still undrawn cards in this deck, then you'll deal each of them out as well, even if it takes you above five. Complete the final round using all of these goals, and then once you're done, proceed to the final evaluation. You win the game by completing all of your goals by the end of round five. If you complete them all early, then you have a particularly strong win. Otherwise, total up the number of goal cards that you have not completed during the game and compare it against this track. You can now aim to improve on this from game to game. Once you've mastered the basic game, you can move on to the advanced game, which will include the event cards as well as your goals. You'll deal out the goal cards as usual, but each round you will reveal one event card, which will be in effect for this round only. These will place extra restriction on your gameplay. Here, for example, farm and residential buildings, if they're neighboring pollution, do not count towards any of your goals. This one forces you to surround residential buildings in order to keep them on the board. This one just adds new goal cards to the goal deck. This one stops you from communicating during the round. While they're not all bad, this one does flip a few of the tiles face up and let you pick from those with some knowledge of what you're about to draw. There are a total of 12 different events available in the game. 
and that's how to play 60 second city hope you enjoyed this video and if you enjoyed this video please help us by hitting that like button and subscribe to the dice tower if you haven't already done so and if you have any questions comments or feedback please leave them in the comments section below see you next time